Roberts win it. Base hit and your game winner. We wrap up the work week at the Luke Urban Fieldhouse at Jerfee High School as the New Bedford Whalers come to town for game two against the Hilltoppers in 2023. Hello again, everybody. I'm Evan Massoud. Happy Friday and welcome inside Jerfee. First time these two teams squared off was basically one month ago. It was a Friday night, April the 14th, out in New Bedford. And the Whalers took that one in five sets. They needed extra points to get it done. So to say that these two teams are evenly matched is an understatement. New Bedford's coming in at seven and seven. Durfee, six and eight. For the Hilltoppers, this game tonight, a win, would go a long way to getting them into the playoffs once again this season. You know, in volleyball, the boys' side of things, there's so many D1 opponents, a little different than the girls' programs in the area, that strength of schedule plays a big part. So even under 500, Durfee's got a good shot at a playoff berth this year. Last year, they did have a playoff game. They were out in Winchester. We were there. So we'll see what this year brings. We'll see what tonight brings. But this would be a big win for the Hilltoppers if they can pull it off because it would even the records with New Bedford and it would split their head-to-head -head matchup as well. We have all the action for you next on Fred TV. Stick around. It's time for spring cleaning. The city is rolling out an updated street sweeper schedule. Beginning in April, four phases of street sweeping will be implemented across 12 neighborhoods. Each phase represents one week of each month. For example, the streets in phase one will be addressed in week one of every month. Curb to curb access is essential as drivers may make several passes. Please avoid parking during posted times on new signage in your neighborhood. Parking restrictions are just a few hours, similar to a parking ban during a snowstorm. Questions may be directed to the Department of Community Maintenance at 508-324-2584 or the Mayor's Office at 508-324-2600. A map highlighting all sectors will be posted on the city's website and social media pages. Thank you for your cooperation in keeping our city clean. Welcome back, everybody, inside the Luke Urban Fieldhouse. Evan Massoud with you here. As we're just about ready for this one, you see a lot of green shirts. Kyle Cares, Durfee Cares. Kyle Cares is all about mental health awareness, and tonight, a special presentation by the students spearheading this and athletic director Brad Buston. So we're going to turn it down to the floor for this pregame ceremony. And uh, our Fred TV students produced a video about this very program. Um, and so we're going to share that with you as well after this short presentation. So we invite you to stick around. It's very important stuff here about mental health awareness. And, um, you know, I think it's a great thing that Durfee is, you know, they started this chapter here and they're part of this. Um, New Bedford's wearing T-shirts as well here. So it's, you know, a group effort. It's, it's about... You know, losing the stigma, talking about mental health, you know, it's, it's very important topics. So uh, I'm turning it over now to our athletic director, Brad Buston. Okay, good evening. Welcome everybody to Durfee High School. We are excited about this Southeast Conference boys volleyball game tonight between Durfee and New Bedford. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and we have started a club here at Durfee called Kyle Cares, Durfee Cares. The purpose of this club is to bring awareness to mental health and to try to change the conversation regarding it. We want everyone in our community to understand that you are not alone and that there are resources out there to seek, to seek out when in need. Mental health affects everyone in one shape or another. We want to erase the stigma that mental health is something that should not be discussed and help people understand that it is okay to not be okay. Members of the club will be at a table near the entrance and have bracelets for those making the pledge to promote mental health awareness and have flyers to the community resource center. 
This, these are members of our club right here. The club is growing. Uh, we just started it this year, and we keep getting more members um, every day. And again, we're going to keep this going uh, year in and year out. And we thank New Bedford, and um, good luck tonight. Yeah. All right. So we're going to have New Bedford come to this side, and we're going to take a big group picture on this side of the net. So again, you know, as I mentioned, uh, very important topic, and um, you know, the Kyle Cares uh, was started by the family of Kyle Johnson, uh, who was from this area. He went to school in uh, North Attleboro, went to school at Bridgewater State, and sadly um, lost his life to mental health um, as a, f a freshman in college. So, you know, it's a heavy topic, but it's a necessary one. And um, we applaud Durfee, Brad Busson, the athletic department, guidance department for all coming together to create this chapter here. As the teams take a group photo, we're going to take a break here and let you see the feature piece um, about this chapter and this program that our Fred TV students produced with the heads of the club, um, which are also Durfee students. And we'll be back right after that with the start of the volleyball match. Stay with us. Hi. 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 Hi, I'm Maggie O'Connell. I'm Julia Hargraves. My name's Emma McDonald. I'm Julia Raposa. And we are the leaders of the Active Minds chapter here at Durfee. Active Minds is the nation's premier nonprofit organization supporting mental health awareness and education for young adults. They're a national leader for young adults' mental health, advocacy, and suicide prevention. Did you know one in five Americans suffer from mental health illness? One in five. As Active Mind leaders, we had the opportunity to attend a MIAA Sportsmanship Summit a couple months ago. We had the privilege to sit in on a workshop that was focused on mental health and were introduced to the Kyle Cares program, where the story of Kyle Johnson was shared with us. Kyle Johnson had a profound impact on many people in his 19 years. He had a passion for helping others and was driven with the motivation to make those around him happy. Kyle always put others before himself despite his own internal pain and struggles. His compassion made the world a better place. In Kyle's memory and in recognition of his legacy for caring for others, the Kyle Cares Foundation was created. Kyle Cares is a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting open and honest communication about mental health challenges experienced by teens and young adults in today's society. Kyle Cares aims to eliminate student self-harm and suicide by creating school environments where students and their caregivers have the confidence to support and seek help without shame or hesitation. Why we want it here at Durfee. Having this Active Minds chapter here at Durfee is so important to us. We want to help change the culture around mental health at Durfee. No one should have to struggle alone. We believe it's never too late to start taking care of your mental health, and we want to help begin the conversation about it. We want to encourage those to seek help. We want to empower the individuals to talk about and open up about their mental health. We want to grow awareness to the resources available in our school. Hi, I'm Mr. Thran, one of the adjustment counselors here at Durfee. As an adjustment counselor, I work with students to support their social and emotional needs, mental health being one of those areas. I am currently working with your Active Minds leaders to support students through this awareness campaign. Turfey High School School Adjustment Counselors also work to connect our school with mental health resources. If you or someone you know is struggling with their mental health or needs to talk, please contact me or see one of your grade level adjustment counselors. If you are unsure which office to go to, please contact me or one of your Active Mind student leaders who will inform me and I can guide you in the right direction. Overall, our mission is to create a change in the Durfee community so that mental health is openly discussed, cared for, and valued. If you are passionate about caring for others, mindful about mental health, are seeking help or resources, or want to become a part of a supportive, judge-free community at Durfee, become an ally of mental health and join our Active Minds chapter. Your mental health matters. We are here for you. We will listen to you. You are not alone. You matter!
It's go time here at Durfee. Volleyball on tap on this Friday, May the 12th. Game number 15. We are three quarters of the way done with spring sports. Ridiculous. Ridiculous how fast this school year has gone by. It's, it's just, it blows me away every time. And uh, this year especially has been very quick. Well, we had baseball on Wednesday this week. Nice to have more than one game in a week. It's been kind of slow going and challenging this spring with the, you know, uh, field situation. The weather's been eh, kind of iffy at times. Um, and then Wednesday was just, I, I'll be honest with you, you know, sometimes things are just a little out of sync. Wednesday was a weird broadcast, and, and I never say that, but we had some technical issues at the start. We had some lineup changes that happened literally like 60 seconds after the lineup was given to us, and then the changes weren't made, uh, given to us, just the original lineup. So half the lineup got shifted up for Somerset. Then there was a, a record sheet, it's, um, stat sheet that was incorrect my goodness it was uh <laughs> it was kind of rocky my score i made a reference to it my score sheet looked like something out of a spring training game at the majors and anybody who watches baseball you've heard the announcers say that you know exactly what i'm talking about um so hopefully a smoother one here tonight to to end the work week and um and we're thrilled that you're joining us tonight from durfee so um really excited this is uh one that I've been looking forward to. And um, New Bedford will start with possession here tonight. Ball and fast, good dig there from Connor Silva, the libero for the Whalers. Granham will take a swing. Let's play on the back line. Durfee's libero making the play there. Brady Lavoy uh, falls in. The Hilltoppers will draw the first point here tonight at home. Uh, similar to uniforms tonight. New Bedford's worn red here in the past, but um, not tonight. Durfee in their multicolored white and somewhat red, and New Bedford in all white tonight. Um, so a little different look for both sides. Well, not so much for Durfee, I'd say more for, more for New Bedford. As that one drops in and we're tied here early. won the score. Faking the swing, good block, and unable to get there quick enough. And New Bedford Cable had the first meeting between these two teams. We did air it here in the city, and um, we welcome, we welcome our friends from New Bedford who will be tuning into this one as well. Finding the corner, back corner, back line point, New Bedford. Set from Gavin. The fingertips. Now New Bedford with a chance. That's going to fall in. Whalers JV team took the first match uh, in two sets, sweeping Durfee. Varsity looking to avenge that loss and, of course, the loss earlier this season. to New Bedford. You know, we, that baseball game we had on uh, Wednesday, Durfee at Somerset, 
It was Durfee's home game just on the road. Tough loss for Durfee. Somerset's pitching was just outstanding. Um, Dion on the mound rarely had to labor and uh, went six strong innings. Somerset made some really good defensive plays as well. I haven't seen Somerset in a number of years, um, especially with, since the expansion um, of the conference here, you know, that merge with the OC and the Big Three to become this conference now, the Southeast Conference. Don't see Somerset as often um, because we try to prioritize the conference games as much as we can. That one sits on the top of the net there. Um, but I, I was impressed and I thought Somerset looked really good. And uh, it was kind of an off day for Durfee. Go figure, now next day, playing the very next day, which was yesterday, Durfee has to travel to BR. We know how good BR is. The Hilltoppers upset them on the road, and Somerset loses 1-0 to Aponiquid after putting up nine runs the other night against Durfee. So, you know, baseball's a weird game. And, you know, I know we say it for football, any given Sunday. Well, <laughs> you can say that about any sport. Any given day, somebody can come out and... and pull off an upset for Somerset. That was just their third loss of the season. Um, you know, a one nothing to the Lakers. So that was surprising to see yesterday in the paper. And um, great block by the front line there of New Bedford. Yeah, Dilson Texera, number 10. And Carter Barboza, the junior captain, number 18. Um, so yeah, I mean you just you know you just never know that one into the net and it's eight to four, and uh, so you know for Durfee you know I kind of said in that game they really needed the win against Somerset at least I felt that because the conference schedule was restarting now the second game in the conference um, against all four opponents. I said you know you gotta you gotta beat the teams that are lower than you. That looked like it was out. That was close, but the point to New Bedford. Um, but, you know, they came up short and they came back in a big way yesterday to beat BR on the road. You know, that's a site that their, their season ended last year when we followed their playoff run. They made it into the th third round there of the playoffs before they lost that game uh, that we were there for. So, um, you know, BR is no slouch. Always, always tough across the board in athletics. So a good win for Durfee. And that, you know, that's a big win for them because, you know, it's against it. Another common opponent, a conference opponent. And now, you know, going down the stretch, they only have a handful of games left as well. Um, so, you know, they're, they're getting close to a must-win situation, the, the baseball team is. Softball at four and nine for the Hilltoppers as well. Two wins against Conley this year. They beat Brockton 10 to eight and they beat Seekonk six to five. First time they played them. And now uh, BR tomorrow, Brockton Monday, New Bedford Wednesday, Dartmouth Thursday, and then uh, senior night against Diamond, the rematch. And that is on Monday the 22nd, that game we plan to have uh, to end the regular season. But, um, you know, good chance here for uh, Lady Hilltoppers to uh, maybe try to pick up a couple more wins and see where life takes them as well. Good block. And the Hilltoppers get the point. So we're coming down to crunch time, and it's definitely going to be a game of numbers and wins down the stretch here for both baseball and softball. You know, for volleyball, um, as you know, I mentioned in the open that strength of schedule plays a big part, that this is a true D1 schedule. Um, you know, it's a, it's a different, different animal than the girls volleyball programs where they have different levels and it's, you know, much more substantial in terms of the number of schools. Well, Durfee at six and eight is ranked 22nd. New Bedford at seven and seven ranked 19th. And Coach Brendan Kelly telling me that Durfee's rankings have gone up basically every week where they are in the standings. And um, here they started eight, eight games on the road. Um, let's 
six out of the first nine on the road. Durfee did. Um, and, you know, they, they lost a lot of those on the road. But since then, kind of been 500 or just over 500. Their last seven games, they're four and three. They've gone the distance in quite a few. Um, they've had some big wins in that mix. So uh, tonight, though, as I said, you know, I think this is a big one tonight because it'll get them a little higher up. It evens them with New Bedford, and I think that's an important thing as well as we, you know, hit the final quarter of the season. 13-9, Whalers continue to lead. In between there, Ronice Ayala with the point. Not using a lot of power that time, just some finesse. And the lead back to five. Close one there. Um, I think that if it was let go, probably would have fallen in bounds. It was going to be very close. So, you know, nothing more you can do there other than to try to play it. But the reaction time was a little late. Get down to the court. And Connor Silva not able to handle it. Ties him up. And Durfee breaks that rotation for New Bedford. Matuzic on the serve for the Hilltoppers. High arcing serve, Silva plays it. Now a big swing coming off of Lavoy. Oh, excuse me, uh, that's De Silva, my bad. Elias De Silva uh, wearing the libero tonight, number 55. But a big time swing there from Nick Rosa. And it's New Bedford's 16th point. Touch. Called against Hilltopper setter. Serve from Ryland Brody. Bounced off the hands, a good block. And the Hilltoppers with the point, a net violation against New Bedford. Short serve from J.O. Big hit, out of bounds, but it was deflected at the front of the net, so out of bounds off of Durfee, and New Bedford with the point. Time swing, played on the back line. It went all the way back to Durfee's side. Almost took out Brooklyn Rodericks. Actually, that was Ayala, excuse me. And the point to New Bedford. But Milford unleashed a vicious spike. Amir Sali Tavares on the serve. Govin with the set. Milford wants it again. That's in, right on the line. 19-12. DeMello will serve. Low line drive serve, not much spin on it. Falls in, nobody there. That's a really tough play. Now notice DeMello, now he's coming to this side, working both sides of the court with the serve. This is something that Coach Bullier talks about a lot when she's on the broadcast with me. Um, you know, working both sides of the court, not just targeting the same spot every time, and it's not easy to do that when you're the one serving. And I give DeMello a lot of credit because he's putting an emphasis on that. 
big hit off of Govan in front, and it's the 20th point for New Bedford, courtesy of Rosa. Twenty to fourteen. That's in on the back corner of the court. Milford strikes again. Getting some good leaps there on the uh, far side of the court. Really big swings. And now Govan to serve. Tuzik to Milford. Elevates again. Tough play. Now at the line, the Whalers answer the bell. Big time swing there as well. Granham fakes him out. in. Milford back to serve. Off the official. 21-18. Good serve there. Blocked in front, but it goes. It does go out of bounds. Jerfy closes to within two here in the first. Nice little run here for the Hilltoppers. Some good serves from Milford. Out of system. Third touch comes back to Jerfy, and they can try to strike. Granham unloads. Five straight for Durfee. Luna Rosa trying to place it. It worked once earlier, not that time. Uh, Durfee has to send it over on the third touch. Gives Rosa another chance, uh, another chance, Ayala rather, excuse me, another chance. That breaks up that string of points for the Hilltoppers. And now New Bedford back to serve. Barboza will let it fly. 22 to 20. Poked straight in the air. Granham waits on it, and it's not coming back. Man, did he elevate. Jake and I were talking pre-game, watching Durfee warm up, and Granham can really, he's like just suspended there in the air. It's amazing, once the elevation he gets. And it, and it goes to the point that you don't have to be tall to get that power. It's all about technique, as the Whalers will get it back now. At 23-21, and Ayala to serve. Matuzic setting, flipped over, and in between there for DeMello, kind of a different look. Into the net it goes, and the point to Durfee. Coming down to the wire here in set number one. Good serve from Matuzic, back line plays it. That's Ayala, double touch, and we're tied at 23. Short serve played by Silva. That's down to the court, and it's 
Set point for New Bedford. 24-23. Ryland Brody will serve. Try to take game one here. DeMello blocked! And the Whalers hold on to take the first. A valiant effort by Durfee. Had a nice couple of runs there to claw back into it, but ultimately coming up short in the first set by two points. As the teams switch sides here at the field house. So 25-23, game one to New Bedford. We'll take a quick break here as we head to the second set. Watupa Rowing Center is uniquely located on South Watupa Pond in Fall River, the only school of its kind in the region, tuition free and open to all. At Watupa Rowing Center, we're really looking for you. There's so much potential here, guys. Like, you can be a part of something so cool. South Watupa is a non tidal freshwater pond large enough to accommodate a six lane race course. For most of the year, we are out on the water, and during the winter months, our rowers head inside for strength and conditioning. I thought it would be a good idea just to try it, and I came here and now I'm stuck, I guess. <laughs> I love it. We like to have athletes that, or kids that like, want to learn to row, no matter the background, because that is how you get the diversification. This is a sport that can fit anybody who wants to do it. Our schedule is flexible. When you are ready, we are here. We want to make you the best you can be. We're kind of up and coming. What we want is to make sure that rowing is accessible to anybody and everybody who wants to try it. From your first practice to your first regatta, our experienced coaches will be there to support and encourage you. I've been looking for a new hobby, so I tried it out on um, the summer program and I really liked it. At first it's going to seem real hard, but the more that you do it, the easier it gets. Student rowers learn hard work, dedication and integrity, vital skills that directly transfer to real life off the water. Crew is the ultimate team sport. Ready and go! When we get in that boat, we know we all have to watch out for each other, make sure we're all doing our jobs, because each part of the boat has their own job. And if you're not doing your job, then someone else is gonna suffer. Rowing can be another course to higher education. You might even be eligible for scholarships. Our goal for us as coaches, right, is to like build that foundation right now, get those kids, get high school kids, get middle school kids that might like to do it, and hopefully they love the sports as much as we do, that they want to take it to the next level. At Watupa Rowing Center, there is so much to see, so much to learn, and so much to love, and it's right here where you live. For more information, visit our website at watupparowingcenter.org. Welcome back inside the field house, everybody. Evan Massoud with you. For boys volleyball, Whalers took that first set. A tight one to the end as we move to the second set. The uh, Watupa Rowing Center there, you just saw that promo we did for them going to be having their United We Row summer program starting soon. We visited that last year. And um, be sure to check it out. It's really, it's a good program. It's uh, something different here in the city if you're looking for something different to do. Set number two underway, and that is out of bounds. Whalers are doing this a lot, and we started in the first set where they they crash the net with two players, and um, you know one does a swing and a miss just to fake out the defense, 
And then the second player that's trailing comes in and actually puts the ball in play and tries to get the point. And um, it's faked out Durfee a couple of times. It's faked out me a couple times, actually. <laughs> I thought someone was going for the ball, and then obviously they didn't get it. A bit of a misfire right there for uh, Devon Shields. And it's a 3-0 start for Dorfee here in the second set. De Silva continuing to serve. See, there's a fake right there. And it pinned right between the defense. That was Tavares up the ladder and slamming it right between the two defenders for the Hilltoppers. So that breaks up that little streak for Durfee to start the set. Whalers on the board, and Ayala with the serve. J.O. with the big swing there. Now New Bedford sending it back. That was Ayala from the back line, poking it back over. That's out of bounds as they went right back to J.O. Got a second look at it and made it count. Another fake. Good block from Durfee. That might have been going out of bounds, and I think Silva just bailed out the Hilltoppers. That, though, will go out of bounds. Too hot to handle. Crossing spike off of Govan. Granham, it's poked back, reaching over. You know, New Bedford's front line right here, particularly Dilson, DaCosta, Texera, very tall, but Granham and Govan with the denial after possession goes back to New Bedford. They get the block. That's out of bounds, no deflection. And Durfee with the point. OJ, um. J.O. there, back to serve now. Poked across by Rosa, set from Govan. Milford finds open floor, the Bermuda Triangle, if you will. Seven two Hilltoppers. Reaching with Silva, that was close to a double touch. Off the net, deflected enough by Granham. Now Milford, and he misfires. A little late on the swing, and it stays on that side of the net. Just out of bounds. Good look though from Milford that time. Timing was better. Another point. For the Whalers, as this time Milford was blocked. Ball and fast. De Silva plays it. Govan will set for Granham, who elevates, coming right back. And Govan will try to flip it over, and he does. Catches the defense off guard.
big swing, back line able to handle. Govan will set again, Milford wants another point. Ayala able to play it, the set from Barboza, and that's gonna sail, but it was deflected, so the point to the Whalers. That one skips over the net, out of bounds. 9-6 the score. Another close one there. Right on the boundary line for the Whalers to get it right back. Connor Silva lets it fly. But Tuzik will set. That's out of bounds. Was it touched though? But it was out of bounds on this side. It sure looked like it. A stalemate. They're going to redo the point. But quite honestly, I think that was out of bounds. I think Durfee might have just gotten lucky there. It's the question is is whether or not it touched the foot of Rodriguez or Rodericks rather. Excuse me. That's what I'm not sure of. It didn't look like it deflected. Net violation for the Whalers. Durfee will end up with the point. And Milford going back to serve. Had a nice string of serves at the end of the first set that was able to get Durfee back even with New Bedford. And that's right to our official on the ace, not returned. Vacant, blocked in front, out of bounds. And Durfee's lead back up to five. Good awareness there by J.O. to be ready for that. That's out of bounds. Timeout, New Bedford. The Hilltoppers up 13 to 7. And Coach Caturley will put a halt on things for the moment. In this side again, Milford. Ayala, Milford with the save, digs it out. And the block in front by DeMello and company. And Whalers will end up with the point, but two great plays by the Hilltoppers. from Milford, who was in the back line. Oh, 
Blocked in front. Durfee not buying the fake anymore. They're ready. I'll tell you one thing, I'm thoroughly impressed. The defense for Durfee in this second set has been outstanding at the net. They have made adjustments and the blocking has just been phenomenal. Misfire there will give uh, New Bedford the ball back as De Silva couldn't get it over the net. But you know, Durfee undersized in front but they're making up for it with their leaping ability and the blocking has been absolutely phenomenal. That comes back and it's out of play. Took down. <laughs> Milford went right down. Big time hit by the Whalers. 15-10. Random pokes it over into the net. Trouble. Third touch, fourth touch, no good, and it's 16 to 10. Out of bounds. And the same a deflection, I didn't see that change direction at all. I'm gonna hit a fingernail, I mean, come on. That was close. Usually when there's a deflection, you see a pretty clear change in direction, and I didn't see it there. Blocked. Govin will get to reset. Now, J.O. Rosa will set for the Whalers. Big time swing from Texera. 16-12. Whalers string together a few points here in the middle part of set number two. Granham wants it. Nice job by Govan. JL back to serve as the Whalers just made a couple of changes to their personnel as the rotation switches. Another point for Durfee. Trouble, 19-12. Tuzik just lets that one go. Point to the Whalers. Big swing, it's gonna be off the net. Durfee plays it. Govan will set now for Milford again. It's coming back again. Great dig there by Bartley. And it falls in. It's a hard earned point there for the Hilltoppers. Granham will serve. I haven't seen him serve yet tonight. Wow! Texera again. There's no defending that. <laughs> Tallest player on the court. Centeo will serve for the Whalers. Down six here, 20 to 14. Govan sends it back towards center Milford into the net it goes. Not a good look there. It's a tough one to square up on because it's coming you know, parallel to the net. It's not just straight up. So you're tracking it in multiple planes. That, that's usually a tough play.
Good placement there. Coming back with DeMello, I like the idea. Double touch on Matuzic, who took the set that time. Milford finally gets his point. He's been trying. And on this near side, this side of the net, a lot of good blocking. New Bedford's had the matchups they like against him. And that time able to get it past the front line. Third touch for the Whalers. Govin will set. Milford again. Trying to go in between here. Rosa will get to set it for Ayala, and it's into the net. Murphy three points away from evening the match. Third touch. Silva will send it back to Durfee. The Hilltoppers almost caught a little out of sequence there. And the Whalers end up with the point. Wow. Oh, excuse me. Durfee with the point. My bad. That's out of bounds. Now the Whalers with the point. 23-17. And New Bedford will serve. Silva will go. Govan, good reaction time there. Matuzic setting for Milford, gets the point, and it's set point for Durfee. I'll tell you, the Hilltoppers may have lost that first set, but they came on strong in the second part of it. That momentum has carried over here into set number two as they look to even the score here at 1-1. Rosa will set. Ayala is blocked. It does go out of bounds, so New Bedford does stay alive. They get the point. It's their 18th. But this has been a very impressive second set for Durfee. Good communication, good serving, good defense, timely hitting. Thoroughly impressive. Barboza with the serve. Hey. 24-19. Into the net it goes. And that's it for the second set. The Hilltoppers do even it. 25-19 they take set number two. And it is a 1-1 match. And that means we're guaranteed to go to a fourth set here tonight. At least four. We switch sides once again. We'll take the quick break here. Third set coming up from Durfee High School. I'm Mike Labossier, What's Upper Reservation Forester. And I'm Paul Furlan, the Administrator of Community Utilities. Protecting open space is a benefit today, and it's a gift to future generations. For over 150 years, Fall River has been a leader in environmental preservation. The Southeastern Massachusetts Bioreserve ensures forests and fields remain undeveloped and accessible. The Community Preservation Act is a vital component to fulfill climate goals. Since 2017, CPA funds totaling nearly $1.3 million have been used to acquire conservation areas in Fall River. Educational programs within the bioreserve connect families to nature and promote understanding and respect for diverse culture, history, and wildlife. Half of Fall River, about 12,000 acres, an area the size of Mattapoisa, is protected water and woodland. Healthy forests minimize flooding, reduce erosion, and provide habitat for endangered species. 
As the region expands manufacturing and technology, people are directly reliant on green infrastructure as an irreplaceable source of clean water and air. Miles of trails wind through unique landscapes which appeal to hikers, cross-country skiers, and mountain bikers. Specific areas are open for safe seasonal hunting. The Bayer Reserve promises endless discoveries and recreational experiences year-round. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. Fall River Public Schools has opportunities for positions in multiple areas for people looking to work with the next generation. Come grow with our team. We have openings for teachers, paraprofessionals and teaching assistants, and other educational support positions available. We are also looking to fill operations support positions such as custodial, security, and food service. We offer competitive salary and benefit plans. We have rewarding work available in our 21st century schools and learning environments. Come grow with us. Please contact the Human Resources Department at 508-675-8420, extension 53708, or see our postings on our website at fallriverschools.org. Welcome back to Durfee. We've switched sides again. 1-1 one, one, the match, even after two sets. The first one went to the Whalers, 25-23. Durfee taking the second, 25-19. And the Whalers will start with possession here in the third. Evan Massoud with you on this Friday night. Thanks for tuning in to live volleyball. Murphy looked really good in that second set. The Whalers start ahead here. And Durfee started with a 3-0 advantage in set number two. The Whalers strike first here in the third. It's a tough play. And that's not coming back. That ball had no spin. And as soon as it cleared the net, it fell right off the table. Even with no wind or elements in here, you know, I, we always say it, those, to steal the baseball term, a knuckleball. Um, you know, the, it's, there's no spin on it, and it dances. The ball does weird things with no spin. The grooves in the ball, the seams, Make it kind of dance a bit. Be a tough play, that comes right back to Durfee. Grant, I'm trying to find the corner. It's played in the back line there by Santeo. That's gonna be a tough play. Kept, no, going towards the scorer's table and out of play, a four nothing run for the Whalers to start the third. So they're coming out hot now. Five nothing the score. Timeout Hilltoppers, Coach Kelly. Trying to stop it here. So both sides now have used one timeout in the match. Not the start that the Hilltoppers were looking for by any stretch. Especially when you consider how great they just played in set number two.
Granham. Oh my goodness. Absolutely unloads on Silva. And Durfee stops the bleeding and gets on the board, gets that rotation switched up now for the Whalers. Matuzic will serve. Silva playing in the back. And right back down to the court. Time it was Anthony Jacobs. Welcome to the game. Six one. Who's serving? Seven players on the court. There we go. Delayed exit for Santeo. Ayala will serve. There's a short arm there, just kind of slapping at it. Good dig in the back. Setting up Rosa, blocked in front by the Hilltoppers. Now Govin will send it back. Silva setting far side. It's coming across. That was probably going out, but Matuzic plays it. Now Durfee with the third touch. J.O. sends it back. The set once again on that back side. Good block for Durfee as Tavares couldn't get it to go. Falling fast and unable to dig it was J.O. Hard fought point there for both sides. Whalers come out on top. A lot of spin on that one there. Oh, some miscommunication. And eight to one, the score. Really the first miscue in that respect we've seen from Durfee tonight. The communication's been excellent. Random went left-handed with it, kind of carried, no swing, just kind of poked at it. See if he swings this time, he does. And... Durfee with the point, the whistle blew. There was a carry called against, lift there, called against New Bedford. So the play dead, and J.O. will serve. Nice dig, poked back over, and the Hilltoppers save it. Watch out for Tavares, another good block. That time Milford with the block for Durfee. Blocked by Govin. Back to Tavares. Matuzic plays it at the net, needing some help. Whistle sounds in a violation for Durfee after some tremendous blocking once again. Brody coming in to serve for the Whalers. Govin pokes it back. Tavar, um, excuse me, Texera had to clear it after he touched it, waited for it to be set again, and then finishes it off. 10 to two the score, largest lead for either side in this match. It's going to be a tough play, and it's not coming back. 10-3. Granham will serve. Will this be a sequence here where Durfee can string a few together? Not a good start here in the third set. Good serve there, though, for Granham. Third touch, and it's sent over by Souza. Excuse me, that was Rosa, my bad. Tavares, big swing, just inside the antenna. And the Whalers will get it right back. Time the Whalers with the block. Giving Durfee a taste of their own medicine. Oh. 
big hit from Milford. Had the defense frozen, nobody wanted a piece of that one. Govin to serve. Good effort there from Matuzic. But the serve not returnable. It's a 10 point lead for New Bedford as Centeno now will continue to serve. Going out, long. Jordan Oposda. Into the game. Milford on the serve. That is going to sail long as Jensen Farnworth got his first swing of the night. That one trips over the net. Just barely enough momentum to get it and to uh, Texera. Into the net it goes. Murphy getting a couple back here, 14-7. And Milford will change to this side now and try to give a different look. That's going to be short. Silva sends it, Da Silva sends it across. Oh, a swing and a miss. And a good serve there from Da Silva. Farnworth, good dig from Govan, third touch will go long. Block, Durfee stays with it. Back to New Bedford. And that time, Tavares gets the point. Granham. Sends it to the back line. Not a lot of downward motion on it. Right at the net. Nice job by Matuzic. Govan to Matuzic. Granham elevates. Blocked. Stays with it. Third touch. Not doing it. 18 to 9. And Durfee stuck in a Barboza serving pattern here again. Whalers stringing some together. Third touch, sent back. Farnworth can't get it to go, and Durfee will stop. New Bedford's run will go back on the serve.
time hit from Granham. 19-11. JL back to serve for Durfee. 19-11 the score, Whalers ahead, and have been ahead since the start of this third set. Checking the rotation here, make sure that Durfee did not substitute out of order, and it appears everything is good. Third touch. Whalers send it back. Durfee will have a chance to set and fire. Blocked! Tavares and Shields. Ryland Brody in once again to do some serving. And a specialty player, you see him mostly for the service game. New Bedford lead back to 10, late now in this third set, 21-11. As good as Durfee looked in the second, everything not going their way here in this third set. It's pretty amazing, the waves of momentum in this game. Dig it out. Edson Tavares in a serve. Glavin setting. Milford unloads on the defense. 22-13. Out. Santeos checking back in for New Bedford as he goes on the serve. Barnworth gets the point, set point for New Bedford, and he'll have plenty of chances to do it. Durfee stays alive here. Milford going back to serve. He's had a nice night behind that back line.
Network on the other side now. Third touch into the net, nothing doing. No room for error for Durfee. 24-17, set point again for New Bedford. Silva will send it over. And it was deflected, and New Bedford takes the third set. The most dominating score so far, 25-17, an eight-point victory in the third for New Bedford. And they lead the best of five match here. Two games to one. We'll head to the fourth. Durfee at do or die time. Stay with us, live coverage continues. Hi, I'm Kristen Cantara Oliveira. I'm a member of the Community Preservation Committee and the Historical Commission. Welcome to the Lafayette Durfee House. I'm David Jennings, curator. Built in 1750, this is one of the best living history representations in Massachusetts. Judge Thomas Durfee, the original owner, was also an admired patriot. Judge Durfee made sizable purchases of equipment and weapons to outfit Revolutionary War soldiers, including his own son. Generals and Minutemen frequently met here for secret and strategic military planning. But by the 1970s, the home's significance was largely forgotten and it was slated for demolition. Preservationists rallied, first to fund the restoration and secondly to resurrect interest in the heroic Durfee family. The original frame and foundation are intact. Craftsmen work tediously to repair or replace decorative elements. Visitors are encouraged to handle artifacts and work alongside artists. The Lafayette Durfee House is included in the National Register of Historic Buildings and exceeds standards of the Secretary of the Interior. However, time continuously ravages the one-of-a-kind structure. Grants from the Community Preservation Committee, as well as monetary contributions, spearhead the efforts of tireless volunteers. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. The school administration building at 417 Rock Street was built over a hundred years ago by craftsmen from around the globe. And Mr. and Mrs. William Brennan, mill owners, raised their nine children in this statement home. Decades later, the property became too costly for a single family and was gifted to the Four River School District. Architects reconfigured the 22 rooms to accommodate administrative staff. By 2018, this historic structure was compromised, eliciting mold and water damage. Once dubbed the last big house on the hill, this extraordinary piece of architecture was in poor condition. Care was shown to restore artistic elements, including the circular railing and banister, chair rails, crown molding, antique and oak flooring, and the building is now handicap accessible. Roof work was the primary concern for the Brayton House. This new pitch surface directs water to a modernized drainage system. Ten years ago, four of our residents voted to adopt the Community Preservation Act, which allows for a 1.5% surcharge on property tax bills to incentivize history, travel, diversity, and recreation. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. Welcome back, everybody, inside the Luke Urban Fieldhouse. We've switched sides. Durfee will serve here to begin the fourth set. You see Dur uh, New Bedford took the last one. 25-17 will clear the scoreboard as we begin the fourth. De Silva serving for Durfee. Good block to get it started. Well, so far tonight, no one's lost on the right side of the court. Okay. 
Not good for Durfee. That's where New Bedford would finish if we went to a fifth. <laughs> Into the net. 1-1. One, one. Hilltoppers must win now or the match ends. So they're trying to force a fifth. Game one. Went to New Bedford 25-23. Game two to Durfee. 25-19. And then game three just moments ago. New Bedford 25-17. And that falls in. Coach Kelly not happy about that point going the other way. I'll say it again, we have rarely had any problems defensively with the communication side of things for Durfee. They've been very, very good communicating tonight. But just a couple mishaps like that one cost them a few points. Long rally here. That's gonna go far corner. De Silva plays it. Govin setting Matuzic. And the back line for New Bedford plays it again. Ayala to the scorer's table. And the point goes to New Bedford. Up and down the schedule here in New Bedford. Um, in a bit of a rough patch here. Played five matches since April 29th. And they've lost four of their last five games. The only win was Barnstable. And the Hilltoppers quickly into a timeout here down four to one in the fourth. And for Durfee, as I mentioned, they're 500 over their last six games. Win, lose, uh, lose, win, lose, win, and lose, win. Um, so for New Bedford, it's kind of been a little bit of a rougher stretch. They had started the season six and three. But now at seven and seven, this one equally is important to them. They have Brockton on Monday. And Durfee on Monday has New Bedford. Um, excuse me, New Bedford's here. A uh, DR on Monday at DR. And then they'll see Brockton on Wednesday. So Brockton going through both um, New Bedford and uh, Durfee here over the next week. We'll head back to the court. Durfee's senior night will be Tuesday, May 23rd against Braintree. We'll have that one as well. And that'll be the next one from inside this building. Four to two. Durfee getting it back. Matusik on the serve. And putting it away. Rosa with the point. Let's see, no, they changed it. Durfee getting the point. New Bedford in shock. Coach Caturley shaking his head, not liking that call at all. Into the net. Too strong. That's going to go long. Short serve. Dug out there by Silva. Texera flips it over. Flips it over again, nobody home. Hey. 
into the net. And a short serve from Tavares. 7-5, Granham to serve for Durfee. Blocked by Texera. Durfee with the point, Govin will serve. Another kill from Tavares. As he pins it right between the defenders. Nothing they can do. Dig there by DeMello. Farnworth. Flipped back to Silva, plays it. Durfee with the point. Time the block for the Hilltoppers. Nine to eight. Milford. Farnworth into the net. We're tied. Nine nine. Short. Durfee's bid to take a lead here. Falls short, 10-9, New Bedford. They'll go back on the serve. Good block, DeMello. Silva with the ace and Durfee's first lead of the set. 11 10. Nice save there by Granham. Third touch and Matuzic will lob it over. Out of bounds. Point for Barboza and the Whalers. Tuzik setting. J.O. sends it over. Didn't get good hit on it, but did the job. Govin setting backwards. He too didn't quite get a good look at that one. Now the Whalers. Granham with the block still alive, but now the whistle sounds, and it is Durfee's point. 12 11 the score.
Back to New Bedford. Rosa that time. Matuzic and it's not coming back. Oh boy. Take several strikes again. with the point as that one was short. Back and forth we go in this fourth set. New Bedford trying to close out a win. Gurphy trying to come back and force a fifth. So we hit the middle part of this fourth set. Milford lets it fly and it's out of bounds. No deflection, it was too high. And it's Swing there from Milford. Random serving for Durfee. Out. And Hilltoppers give it back. Santeo coming in. Ready to serve. Once again, Texera unable to be stopped. Five point lead for New Bedford. Twenty to fourteen. with a huge swing. Whale is able to play it. Third touch will sent, be sent back to Durfee. And now, up into the rafters, waiting for it to come down. And Milford sends it back. Setting up Tavares again, and he strikes! Seven point lead in the fourth. The Whalers putting it away. Uh, rather, Bartley slipping there. Hey. 
just out of bounds. Durfee now in a big hole with very little room for error. Seven point deficit, New Bedford three points away from sealing the match and sweeping Durfee in 2023. Good block in front by DeMello, that's out of bounds. And that's another point back for Durfee. Right on the corner, Texera. Match point. And that's the match, ending in a rather ugly way, honestly. 25-16 here in the fourth. No fifth tonight. And as the Whalers winning it here against Durfee on Durfee's home court. And for the Hilltoppers, it's their ninth loss and New Bedford moves back above 500 with the 3-1 final. This is one that Durfee really needed. I know I said it in the open and um, tough one to lose, particularly at home, particularly when you look like you really figured it out in that second set. Second set was thoroughly impressive, and um, but uh, the third and the fourth sets, tough for the Hilltoppers. New Bedford really buckling down on Durfee, and they're able to take it. Final score one last time here at Durfee, the Whalers win it three to one in four sets. Jake Fitzgerald, the cameraman tonight for us. I'm Evan Massoud. We will see you next on Monday the 22nd, as long as the weather is good, for softball senior night. So we hope you enjoy a great weekend and a great week ahead. And we will see you for the final week of the regular season here on Fred TV. Good night, everyone.